In this tutorial video, we're going to see how to use anonymous classes to handle events in Java. So let's first start off by defining what an anonymous class is. So an anonymous class in Java is uh, a class not given a name and is both declared and instantiated in a single statement. So you should consider using um, an anonymous class whenever you need to create a class that will be instantiated only once. So although um, an anonymous class can be complex, the syntax of anonymous class declarations make them most suitable for uh, small classes that just have uh, a few simple methods. <clears throat> so an anonymous class must always implement an interface or extend an abstract class. However, you don't use the extends or implements keyword to create an anonymous class. Instead, you use the following syntax here to declare and instantiate an anonymous class. So within the class body, you must provide an implementation for each abstract method defined by the interface or abstract class. So here's an example <coughs> that uh, implements an interface uh, named uh, runnable, which defines a single method named uh, run. So, <clears throat> there, are f there are a few other important facts concern concerning um, anonymous classes. So, an anonymous class cannot have a constructor, thus you cannot pass parameters to an anonymous class when you instantiate it. An anonymous class can access any variables visible to the block within which the anonymous class is declared, including local variables, and finally, an anonymous class can also access methods of the class that contains it. So that's the theory behind uh, anonymous classes. In the next step, we're going to apply this um, to our customized interface in order to handle events uh, using it. So uh, meet me in the next step. So in this step, we're going to see how to apply an anonymous class um, in order to handle events. So we're going to be working inside our customized interface and we're going to be using an anonymous class to, um, to uh, perform an action on our login button like we've been doing in the previous couple of videos. So this is basically just a third method, a third way of um, applying um, an action event uh, to a login button using an action listener. So <clears throat> let's get straight to it. Uh, let's go to where we create our login button, which is um, here. And then we want to add an action listener to that login button. <coughs> login button dot add action listener and then we're going to declare our anonymous class because it doesn't have a name um, we have to use the following syntax new and then the name of the interface or class name in our case it's the interface action listener like so so that's our um, our anonymous class declared <clears throat> and then we have the body of our anonymous class so this is where we're going to add our action perform method as we do or as we've done in the uh, previous couple of videos so public void action performed action event we'll call it e open it up uh, and then we're going to have the instruction, which is basically, as usual, change the text. So set text. Um, you have clicked on the button. So, <clears throat> and now we have to um, close our um, anonymous class. Now, remember, look carefully at the parentheses. So we need to close these parentheses, or we have to close these parentheses uh, here, and semicolon. 
Um, there's an error here. There's a there's a parentheses uh, that shouldn't be there. Okay. So um, <clears throat> this is our um, just to recap. This is our um, anonymous class declared here using uh, the interface action listener. Then we have the body of our um, anonymous class, uh, which is basically the uh, action perform method, and then the instruct the instruction of that method here. So <clears throat> let's run the program, and as you will see, it should work perfectly fine. Click on login. There you go. You have clicked on the button. So um, that's how you use anonymous classes uh, in order to handle events in uh, Java.